Hey everyone and welcome to the accessory lesson to the day two. So my two's in that phrase. Well, um, what today I'm going to show you is what we saw in the previous lesson, uh, which was a PowerPoint presentation about parameters and methods, returning values, creating your own methods and loops. And so I'm going to go to a new project here at Beans IDE just uh, to show you. I'm going to create a Java application. I'll just name it uh, Lesson 2 or something. I'm not going to say it's the main project. I already have one, uh, which I don't want to accept. And so here I've got my main, you know, the package and everything. So I'll just delete these comments because uh, they just occupy space for me. And well, let's start with creating our own method. If you remember from the last video, uh, which I'll post probably uh, at the bottom in the comment box there, if I'm in YouTube, then we saw parameters and uh, well, creating our methods with parameters. So to create our own method, we first have to declare it as private or public. In my case, since I only have one class, which is the main class here, I'm going to declare it as private. And then the data type, which I'm going to say it's void because it's not going to return any value just yet. And then the name, so add or something. And this is going to add two numbers. So we're just writing our main method there, add. It tells us this doesn't do anything. Well, not really. Again, the static stuff here in the other. Every time you've got a static method, you can only call static variables and methods from that method. So if I've got a variable here, and I assign a value to it, I can't use it from here unless I say it's static. I don't know if it goes before. Yeah, before. If I say it's static, then um, I can use it from within my static methods. I can't use it here either because this method is now static too so that I can use this method, I can call this method from inside my main method. You shouldn't really worry about what static is just for now. So add, <laughs> but it doesn't do anything. Well, we can add two numbers, five plus three. It tells you an error because this isn't anything. You're just adding 5 plus 3, but you're not assigning that value to anywhere. So, if we want to assign that value to a variable, we can end sum equals 5 plus 3. Okay, great. Now, what's that for? We can't use that here because this variable only exists inside this method. And we can't use it, well, we can use it anywhere. So what we have to do is change this void to end. And now we have to return sum. And now if we write add, this this add method is 5 plus 3 because it's the value we're returning. So if we print out the add system, out print out end, and we print out just add, then you'll see that uh, I'm right. I'll just click run here in the method. And you can see we get 8. Because add is behaving, the value that add has is the value it's returning. Now, what if we want to modify our method so that we can give it the two numbers we're going to add? Int n1 and int n2. And then here we say that we're going to add the numbers uh, 10 and 15. Okay. So now here we substitute. 5 and 3 by n1 plus n2 because as we call the method we are specifying the values we're going to be using. So 10 gets assigned to n1 and 15 gets assigned to n2. So now let's see, it should give us 25. Oh damn, sorry, I run the incorrect project. That's not what I want to do. I'll just click run in this one. 25 we get there. So everything's correct up to now. We've seen parameters of methods returning values, data types and methods, and private and public. So we've created our own methods, basically. Remember that parameters are always defined inside the method's declaration parentheses, 
and when you call your method you only have to write the values so you don't have to write in 10 or something that's wrong just write the values you're going to assign to these variables <laughs> if I go to our spot for a second and I go to um, my scripts for example this one I'm, I'm creating then you see there are our styles around and if I want to create a method that will return the R style I pass it just for the sake of example then I can just create a new method private R style not int now I just I want to return an R style so the two coordinates and so the method has not to be boolean or int but R style and then return tile and then the parameter of this method is an R style I'm going to pass it so return t and now <laughs> as soon as I create return tile then this return tile method is going to behave as if it were the tile t not that it's going to be very useful really but you know uh, that's basically what you can do with your methods you can modify the values and then return them so loops what are loops loops are used to uh, repeat something that has to be done several times and you can repeat it uh, a definite number of times or a definite number of times we're going to be seeing today how, can, how we can repeat something an indefinite number of times so while something <laughs> is true we run the body of the loop so for example while 5 is greater than 3 so all the time then we print high and if I run this where is it there if I run this you will see lots of highs there at the bottom which um, this is not really useful to see so many highs if you see my bar there there are lots of highs so 5 is always greater than 3 this is uh, this condition is always true <laughs> so we're going to be um, executing the body of the loop all the time so what we want to do is create a new variable and we're going to name it a and we're going to name it counter so we, we create a counter variable and uh, we can say that while counter is less than 10 we print out high and then we increase counter by 1 so the first time counter is 0 so this is true we print out high we increase counter by 1 we run again counter is now 1 and it's still on the 10 so we print out high counter is 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it's true and then when it gets to 10 it's false because 10 is not less than 10 it's equal to 10 so we stop the loop and we continue on with the next instruction so let's press play and let's see what happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, loop, 10 times, 10 highs there. So we've run the loop actually 10 times. Pretty interesting, right? So what if we want to uh, show the user the number of times we're currently doing? We just write counter, which is the, the value. If you put something between quoting marks, it will print the actual uh, literal value. So here we're printing high. If you don't put quoting marks, then it assumes it's a variable, such as our counter is a variable, and then it will print its value. However, println needs a string. So if you um, uh, want to like, actually print two variables, there must be a string in between them. So we want to do that, our string must be there. We cannot omit the string, I think. Um, so now let's press play again and see what actually happens and you will see it says 0 high, 1 high, 2 high, 3 high and so on until 9 high yeah, and that's because we're printing first 0 then we increment it by 1 then we are in the second repetition counter is 1 and so on and so on and so on until counter is 9 and when it's 10 it, this is false and the loop is not executed so if we print after the loop counter we shall see it's the value 10 let's press play and with this I'm going to end the actual lesson and indeed uh, the value of counter is 10 so I'm running out of time 
and just wanted to tell you a last thing. If we do, and then put while counter is less than 10, with a semicolon at the end, then we're just going to do this first, and then check. It's like doing the while loop, but the other way around. It still works the same thing. Only that I feel we're going to get to 10. No, we don't. Never mind. I never use a do while loop, really. Well, whiles and do whiles, we've learned about them, and in the next lesson we'll see different types of loops we can use, such as the for loop. Well, I hope you learned something, and you've enjoyed it, most of all. And remember to visit my blog, which will appear next. Subscribe to me on Twitter, and message me if you want private tutoring for Java. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson, then. Thanks for watching.